As I was saying, radiesthesia is part of radionics, and the word radionics came from radio and electronics, and radiesthesia is, aesthesia means to sense and to measure and to detect. So you can have a distant patient or client and uh, diagnose or get an, an, an energy indication of what their needs are and s transmit or broadcast healing back to them. Uh, you can't do that on the old uh, simpler machine, but the newer machines I have, you can broadcast, you can diagnose and broadcast uh, both at the same time to that same patient. And it helps in radionics. Usually we have a sample. I'll, 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 I've got to stay here right here. A sample from the patient, usually a hair sample, sometimes saliva or blood, gives you a connection uh, radionically with that person. And when I say a connection, I mean at higher dimensions that are beyond the physical, that are actually uh, generally unmeasurable except using very sophisticated techniques. So that we are all connected through the higher dimensions, and that's how radionics works. And it's, it defies science and physics, but yet it works. And we have had some um, remarkable results uh, with radionics, this kind of healing. I have uh, pads. If anybody doesn't have a pad or pencil, I can loan you a, a writing pad. But it looks like you've all got your pads. Yeah. So we'll move to the next, the next. Uh. So we're going to talk about frequency and wavelength and, uh, uh, and the spectrum, quantum physics, and then move on to more sophisticated scientific topics, non-locality, because that's what we're using in, in radionics. Uh, quantum physicists have found that uh, experiments can be connected people can be connected through the higher dimensions in ways that are measurable and observable. Uh, magnetic field on self-growth, homeopathy, pineal, biological frequencies, rife, and we'll cover light, biophotonics, crystals, scalar waves, and morphic fields, and sacred geometry. So let's move to the next, next slide, if we can. Okay, fr frequency, everything is vibrating. Nothing in the universe is static. Although it might seem like this table might seem that it's static, but at a, uh, at a deeper level, the atoms are all vibrating. And in liquids, it's particularly uh, evident. There's a thing called Brownian movement. The atoms are all vibrating. And you can actually see through a, micro a microscope the vibration of the little uh, particles because of the, the atoms are all uh, jogging against each other. And the question is, where are they getting that energy from? How, how are, are atoms being provided with energy that causes them to move all the time? And the answer is from, from the zero-point energy that you probably heard about. Zero-point energy is the energy that exists and pervades the entire universe. So it's not just energy, but it's a carrier wave. The vibration is a carrier wave for our healing intention. So the definition of frequency is the, uh, the uh, number of events per second. And wavelength is lambda, is the inverse or reciprocal of frequency. And, and V is the velocity, the speed, uh, the speed of light. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Yeah. Uh, this is an important um, uh, slide. It's the spectrum of energies from the, the lowest energy to the highest. The highest frequency has the smallest wavelength. And around about here is the, uh, the color, the light spectrum of visible light up to ul ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma rays, and cosmic rays. And each, each band of frequency has its own unique capabilities and capacities. That's why we use color therapy. We use color pens in our work. I, I now have all of these colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. And each one has its own unique properties on tissues. 
Uh, blue, for example, cools down inflamed tissue. Red excites uh, underactive tissue. G green is ge for general healing. So th these are all worth trying out in your practice because there are patients and clients who are not so much energy sensitive, but they're light sensitive, they're color sensitive. And you, you want to give them a trial of, of color in your work. And magnetics too, some people are magnetically sensitive. Their body is pr programmed to respond to those energies. And how would you know? You, the best way I, f I think and I find is to use a, use a pendulum or your, any other technique that you've learned. You know, your, 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 your finger technique, this has come apart. But this is the pendulum I use. I learned to douse using a pendulum. I have some pendulums with me if anyone wants them later. So in infrared and microwave you generate a lot of heat and the x-rays they they will damage tissues so we we generally don't use these but but the frequencies go up higher and higher and higher up to to the cosmic levels that are beyond our capability. For, for a laptop. A laptop. Scale, scale, scale. Oh well, it's it's generating uh, maybe a gigahertz, mm -hmm. certainly quite a few megahertz. Um, microwave is around one gigahertz. The probe that we use for our machine is it? Where is that on here? Well, the. the the probe, it's, it's down, actually it's down at a very low frequency and uh, like to the brainwave type frequencies, 8 hertz, 12 hertz, 30, 32 hertz turns out to be an ideal frequency to activate the pineal gland. Uh, that's why I, I use it a lot and uh, it's, it's quite, opening the pineal gland is a very important part of our work. Because all healing comes from the pineal. And then the pineal controls all other organs in the body. It controls the pituitary, controls the thyroid, uh, the thymus, particularly the thymus for uh, um, immune system. So let's move to the next, next slide. Okay, so the, these are some of the pens, yellow. I just got orange lately. It was very difficult to get. One of you asked me for an orange pen, and I managed to get the orange, but I haven't built it into a pen yet. So I got them red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, and ultraviolet too. Yeah. I, I can't hear from... Red activates underactive tissue. So if you have a hypothyroidism, you would want to uh, activate it with, with red. Whereas arthritis, which is an inflammatory condition, you'd want to cool it down with blue. Now these lights, these are, uh, these actually are lasers because of the, the line is so small and, and uh, doesn't diverge. So if, if you have a client who or clients who are particularly um, responsive to light, you might go deeper and get a laser and find uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a big decision because it's more expensive. A laser is about $250. But if you have somebody who's, not respo who's responding only slightly, then you might want to go to the laser. It's more penetrating. Yeah. Okay, next, uh, next slide. Yeah. 
Okay, this is, this is the handout I just gave you with the different, uh, um, up here, a peak performance with uh, 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 pineal activation, psychic, enhanced psychic ability. And up, uh, up at 40 hertz, the brain is producing 40 hertz, uh, surprisingly. So not much is known about that. I'm going to be experimenting with 40 hertz to see if we can get even better pineal function with, with uh, the higher frequencies. Because the, the brain has a natural vibrational frequency at 40, among other frequencies. Yep. Uh, next, next slide. Thanks, sir. Okay, this is a famous experiment you should know about. Uh, uh, Einstein predicted this, and uh, a, a, a French scientist implemented it. What he had was, in here, we had f two photons coming, one going to the right and one going to the left, from the same atom. Uh, and because they came from the same atom, they were interconnected uh, or entangled, there was entanglement between them. And so that when you measured one, you immediately dictated how the other one would be, no matter how far apart, instantaneously. So this was one of the most remarkable experiments demonstrating that there's interconnectedness instantaneously across the universe. And this isn't, this isn't light transmission. Light moves too slowly. This is instantaneous, and this is, the, this is what we're invoking in our work. The instantaneous interconnectedness or non-locality entanglement. Now, maybe we're all entangled uh, because we're all one. We originate from the same source. So to some degree, we're all, we're all connected. And experiments have demonstrated that where you have somebody in one room and an, somebody else in another, and you stimulate person one, with the light or electrical energy, and person two in the other room also gives a response instantaneously. So th these are important experiments that uh, uh, demonstrate the interconnectedness between people. Next slide. Again, this is the same experiment. The, the, the coupled pair and they found, found, funnily enough, they found that uh, husband and wife couples are more connected. So you have a coupled pair in the lab. They get a, a stronger uh, connection. When one is detected by detector one, then its spin is known and then the other detector will instantaneously change what the other one is so that they, they uh, are reciprocally connected. Now all of these, we're not going to go deeply into these. If you're interested, you should do a, a Google search on some of these. Uh, Wikipedia will give you a, a great in-depth explanation if you want to go deeper into what, what is entanglement and interconnectedness. Yeah. Next, next. Uh, Protecting yourself uh, so yeah. negative energy is not... That, I'm going to cover that later. That's called miasms. Okay. It's negative predispositions to disease that, that, that we are all susceptible to. It's like viruses of the higher dimensions. And they, they infect us. And, and the, the, you can get infectedness between people. That's why when you go for a massage, you want to know who was lying on the couch before you. Is there an infectiveness being transmitted, or with your clients, you want to protect yourself. And the reason I say that is the great radionic practitioner, uh, Tansley, David Tansley in England, warned us about that, but, and, but yet he caught the same condition. He died of can the cancers that he was treating. So uh, I warn you that you, you should have ways of protecting yourself when you're doing this kind of work. You know. Which is, brings up another point. This, this is a protection device here that creates a field of protection. 
And my, my good friend, Dr. Rad, whom I'm um, honored has come, he bought two of these from me. And he, he has one even today. Yeah. And it, it's, it's creating a field of protection. It's creating a field of protection in that is, uh, it's emitting a vibrational frequency that neutralizes miasms and creates a shield. Not it neutralizes miasms, not so much EMF. EMF is not the problem. It's what's riding on the EMF. The negative energies, the negative um, programs that are riding on the EMF. So this, this is one way of... Uh, Some of the protective measures in the new machine? They're all, they always have been. Have always have been. That's one of the important things that I build into everything. Even my colloidal silver generators have uh, sacred geometry and uh, uh, sacred um, invocations so that the, the colloidal silver turns out to be holy water. Yeah, because we're, we, want to, we don't want... Water is a very absorbent substance. It's a liquid crystal. It, it picks up all sorts of negative and, and other energies. So you want to know, where was my uh, bottle of water before I bought it? Is, it? is it in some location where there's a lot of negative energy? So. On that topic while I'm over here, this is the famous mind lamp. The mind lamp. It's, uh, it's got a random, a random generator, and randomness s seems to have a, a great ability to pick up subtle energy and emotional consciousness information so that the, c the color keeps changing depending on the prevailing consciousness in the room. If you look it up on uh, look it up on um, What's it made of? Wikipedia, it's it's got an electronic random generator, and th th these there are thousands of these around the world now, picking up consciousness changes. Like every time there's a major event, there'll be a change in the statistics in the randomness, a slight devi deviation that they know that something has happened. Like when there's a, um, an, elec an, ele an election, a great election, or some other great event. 9-11, there was a, a, a major uh, shift in the randomness th on many of these random, random generators. And th this was invented by a group called um, Heart Math, who came out of Princeton University. Princeton University, anomalous uh, anomalous Research, P-E-A-R, Princeton Engineering Anomalous Research Laboratory. So it's important to know. This is the next one, is it? Yeah. Again, uh, I mentioned water. Water picks up information, and this is changes in the bonding of the water. The action of healing by Dr. Yan caused the appearance of a new peak in the spectrum. The, the appearance of this peak, it shouldn't happen, uh, is, is an anomaly thought to be related to changes in the bonding structure of the water uh, as a response of, of this uh, Qigong master focusing his energy on the water. They asked him to, can you change can you change the water in, in a certain direction? And so this shows that water is a very responsive substance. Now we are, we are made of you know, 90% or more water. So we are uh, susceptible to a lot of these energies. So it's important to f the place where we live and the people we hang out with are radiating fields that may be toxic to us. And we don't, we don't really know. Y your, your office, may be in an, a, a toxic environment ge geologically, or your neighbors may be uh, emanating toxic energies. So these are things to, 
to uh, look into. <clears throat> also, uh, the location where you work builds up, uh, accumulates a healing potential. So it takes maybe two or three months, so the, the room where you work. So if you're doing house calls, you can't expect to get the same results as you would in your sanctuary. Your, your office becomes a sanctuary. And some of your devices, when you've used it quite a few times, it will take on that benign uh, healing energy and intention. It's all about intention, the power of intention. I did a workshop with uh, Lynn McTaggart a few years ago after she had just published her book, The Intention Experiment. It's a great book to, to, it's a great book to read. Uh, how the power of intention and how uh, the power of intention can do some very bizarre, anomalous things. Any questions on that? Yeah. What is the name of the book? The, the name of the book? Oh, The Intention Experiment by Lynn McTaggart. So, interestingly, I don't want to go into too much detail, but she, she describes experiments done where uh, not only can we intend to change the future, but we can intend to change the past. Bizarrely as that seems, we can change the past. It's called retroactive causality. I assume it is, yeah, because you're, 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 you're backtracking to come forward, maybe, yeah. What did you call it? Retroactive causation? Causality. Causality. Retroactive. Retroactive. Look it up on uh, Wikipedia. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, this is another important area. I don't, I don't know if any of you use magnets in your work, but magnets have traditionally been very powerful devices for healing, for healing. And uh, there's a difference between the South Pole and the North Pole. And that's, if you're going to use magnets, it's very important to know the difference. South Pole either doesn't do anything or can cause a negative response. The North Pole is giving uh, a f number of cell growth. It's stimulating cell growth and growth rate of cancer cells and culture. So, so obviously with cancer cells, we would want to suppress them. So you could use the South Pole for cancer cells over some uh, cancerous organ. Or if it's an organ that you want to stimulate growth, you would use the North Pole. And again, I would recommend you l learn to use dowsing just to confirm your, your, your theory, your idea. Use dowsing. Should I be using the North Pole or the South Pole here? Yep. Okay, next, next slide. Thanks, sir. Now, th this is the work of uh, William Tiller from Stanford University. He's one of the most eminent uh, scientists who's done work on this area. He, he almost lost his professorial tenure because he was an embarrassment to the university that he was doing this kind of work. But he's published several books now and showing that uh, we can, we can ch with the power of intention Intention imprinted a device was imprinted to reduce the pH. There were three things that he changes in water, a pH, temperature, and electrical conductivity. So he has groups of people focusing and concentrating on raising or lowering the, the, these three um, properties of water. So he was able to show that with intention, a group of people was able to reduce the pH and then it came back up to normal. And he had it in, a, in an enclosure, Faraday cage, so that there would be no interference 
from outside sources, EMF sources. Yeah. So this, this is important to realize an IIED, as he calls it, an intention imprinted electronic device. And th this is what we have here. All of my devices for, the, for our work are intention imprinted electronic devices. They will, and they have a crystal inside which adds to the receptiveness and the storage of your intention. The crystal magnifies, amplifies, and focuses your intention. So th this is exactly the kind of device that uh, Professor Tiller has been doing experiments with. Okay, what's the next, next slide? Oh yeah, crystals. Um, I brought I brought some of my crystals with me. Th th there are there are people who can see light emitting from the la the, the pointed ends of a large quartz crystal after several hours of adapting in the darkness. So, not everybody will be able to see them. Some people are sensitive to uh, the energy coming from a crystal. But it shows that there is something happening with a, it's a valid device, it's a valid um, instrument to use in our work. And there are other aspects of crystals. When you have a crystal, uh, Professor Tiller found that when the crystal was standing up on the table, it had a, a more profound effect than when it was lying down on the table, an, an orientation. So th there are little things that you want to question to, to enhance your work. That, was, that brings up another point. Dr. Abrams, who was the father of radionics, found that his patients uh, responded only when they faced west, strangely. So that's something I, 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 give, I throw this out to you to consider that the, the way the person is standing might have some effect on whether you're going to get mediocre results or excellent results. Yeah. And, and again, tr use dowsing. To, to, it helps a lot to use dowsing. Okay, next, next slide. Uh, applying healing energy to, in, to mice infected with a cancer. Uh, the, no, the, the, the control mice all died, but mice which received the energy experienced a high uh, cure rate between 70 and 100 percent. But m mice which were in the same room with the treated mice didn't receive treatment, but they also showed improvement. It's called the proximity effect. The proximity means if you're in the vicinity of healing, you're going to pick up even though the healing is not being intentionally applied to you. Yeah. <coughs> Dr. William Tiller. Yeah. That's the power of intention. Next, next slide, uh, Gary. Thanks. Again, uh, the power of intention. Cells, growing cells. Uh, treatment. So these would be cancer cells that, that showed reduced growth. Control, the controls continued to grow, whereas the treated cancer cells were suppressed. There's a famous video on the internet that was brought by uh, um, brought back from China. It was uh, Qi Gong masters who were healing uh, bladder cancer, and it was on, on radio radioscopy. You could see an X-ray of the of the bladder, and you could see the cancer gra gradually shrinking down quite quickly over 20 minutes. Greg Braden, yeah, many of you have probably seen this famous video 
when he, Greg Braden and his wife went to China, they, they were at this hospital and these Qigong masters were able to demonstrate. So they, these Qigong masters would have gone into a theta state to, to, so that they could align with the, energy, the healing energies and bring about healing. Okay, ne next slide. Uh, Qi, again, Qigong in mission. Uh, they, t they, they did some experiments. This, again, is Professor Tiller. They, they, try, they, they got uh, a group of people to change the radioactive decay rate of a radioactive substance. So it's not, nothing to do with biology or healing. But yet they were able to get dramatic changes in, uh, in the radioactive emission. Showing that this is a, it's a very powerful, this is a very powerful tool, and uh, it's, uh, it uses uh, qi, which is the ch Chinese uh, name for energy. Qi. The Japanese name for energy is <coughs> ki, <coughs> and the Indian name for energy is prana. But it's pretty much the same thing. So these ancient civilizations have discovered that these energy forms exist and can be tapped into and we can ride on them and, and, and use them through the power of intention. And this was done th over a distance of 1900 kilometers, yeah. showing that the distance is no object. Okay, what's the next, next slide? Yeah. This could be important in our work. The optimal time of day. You see, uh, this, this is um, remote viewing experiments. So it the time of day uh, uh, could be like a narrow window of a couple of hours where you get greatly enhanced results. And other times when you're getting pitifully, even negative results, why is this client not responding? Why is it getting worse? Because you're, you're seeing the client at, uh, at 6 o'clock every week, and that might be the worst possible time for that particular person. So that's something to think about. Again, let's try a different time of day. Uh, and again, dowsing is uh, important to to ask ask uh, for dowsing. I did uh, my dowsing. I I did originally with the great healer um, from Boulder, Colorado. What is dowsing? Dowsing. I'll I'll, I'll explain it. Um, it uses some kind of device which m moves and responds to your intention or to your question. And there are many different kinds of dowsing that are sometimes you use to, uh, m my dowsing, my, my pendulum has f fallen apart, but I, I do have others, yeah, this. <coughs> so you have a, a weight and uh, you s it will take on, it will, uh, Pick up energy. Hannah Kroger was her name. Anna, Hannah Kroger. She was a great therapist from Boulder, Colorado. And then I did two graduate programs on dowsing with the great Raymond Grace, who came through the Canadian Dowsers Association. If you want to learn dowsing, take one of the courses at the Canadian Dowsers Association. Look at look it up. Dowsing. D O W S I N. G. So what, what, how you do it is you, you first of all ask for permission and you ask, uh, do I have permission to douse accurately for the good of all at this time? And then usually it goes this way and that means yes. You have to give it a little bit of energy to, to, to start 
to start it. Yeah, I'm getting a yes. So, so, uh, and then so you would ask, what is the best time of day for this client? And uh, you would say t at two o'clock. Yeah, or uh, six o'clock. Definitely no. So, you may give some consideration to some of these things. Yeah. Yeah, any, your body is, this is, I'm using my body, but it's yeah. amplified through a device, yeah. But I find mine to be very accurate, so I find it to be very accurate. Great, yeah, 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 yeah. And some of, you know, you'll get an innate emotional response as to what's, what's right and what isn't, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you'll find that I, I get uh, that my body and my mind tells me before the, the pendulum does, but that just confirms what I already know, yeah. What about the muscle testing? Muscle testing, yeah, that's, uh, that's another popular one. Uh, David Hawkins, the author of the book Power, Power Versus Force, he and his wife would, he, he would ho hold their arm out and he would press it down. And if it was a weak response, the answer was no. And if it was a strong response, it was yes. So would you call this a form of dowsing? Yep, yep, yep. John, can a person influence the results by thinking something? Well, there again, you've got to try to get into a theta state. You, 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 if you're too much into your head, you, you're not going to get as accurate a result. Try and get into a, a meditative theta state. So meditation, to practice meditation is a, is a, good, uh, is a good practice because it allows you to uh, buy a, a choice to go into a theta state. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see what the next slide is. Okay, the pineal gland, my, f my favorite organ. So, the pineal gland is up right dead center inside the, inside the brain, right dead center. Not the pituitary is up front, just between the eyes, but the pineal is dead center. And it, it uh, controls most other organs in the body. It secretes a lot of different biochemicals, even though it's a very small, a very small organ. It, ha is, it has incredible anatomy, anatomical um, peculiarities, including little cysts that seem to act like, like TV screens, whereby the pineal is able to get pictures coming through from the higher dimensions and you're able to we're able to see uh, we're able to see pictures that come to us and likewise in the ear there are similar uh, organs where we can hear uh, voices or information that's coming to these uh, cosmic receptors the pineal is a cosmic receptor yeah. but the pineal also produces some very important chemicals like melatonin is the, the, uh, the drug of anti-aging and sleep. Melatonin helps you relax and, and get sleep. And it also produces the most powerful psychedelic substance known to man. That's DMT, dimethyltryptamine, is a potent psychedelic substance. So you wonder if perhaps there are times when the pineal puts out a burst of DMT and you get a, people get a psychotic episode because they're getting a DMT b burst coming. Or maybe in smaller amounts, maybe it can give us some imaginative capabilities. Yeah. And uh, that, that brings up the question of ayahuasca. Have any of you t tried ayahuasca? Yeah. It's very similar to DMT. The only problem when I did it a couple of times, you, you can't take ayahuasca without being very nauseated and vomiting, so I didn't want to do it again. Do you have to vomit? Yeah, you have to vomit. You have to. Is that part of the ritual, eh? Yeah. <laughs> the purging? The purging, yeah. The purging, yeah. 
part of the cleansing. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Well, ayahuasca, as you know, is from the South American, <laughs> South American jungle. And it's prepared from plants, which is another p point. How come all these plants know what to produce the complex molecules that affect humans and animals? Um, uh, uh, d drugs that cure cancer, uh, drugs that heal, uh, that are antibiotic. How, how do they know? And I think that's another point of evidence that there's interconnectedness between all forms of life, that the plants are being a affected by the same energies that, are, that affect us, like the poison of a snake. How, how does a snake know which poison to produce? Or anesthetics or other. What, that there's definitely an interconnectedness happening. Information is being transmitted all through the universe. And I'll be talking about that in the second half this afternoon, the metaphysical part. We'll, we'll go look in more deeply into the more esoteric nature of the universe. Okay, next slide, Gary. Welcome. Welcome. Is that, uh, that's Aaron? Yeah, welcome, Aaron. Yeah, here's another picture of the uh, the pineal. <coughs> the pituitary is up front. The pineal is back here. Pineal, yeah. It's very small, but yet very powerful. <coughs> now, interestingly, if you look at the pineal, it's sitting at the very center of a a bone called a cranium, which is like a para, parabolic reflector. So that every, every word we say, every chant uh, is reflected back and focused on the pineal. And maybe that's the power of chanting. It, it creates a powerful vibration on the pineal gland and jogs it and maybe keeps it from atrophying because as we get older, the, uh, the, the pineal gland calcifies and atrophies, shrinks, and that's, that's the aging process. I have, a, I have a device that I've been using for a long time. It, it's a helmet that I sit under and it puts energy down into the brain and into the pineal. It's like a brain zapper. Yeah. See, all organs respond to electrical, magnetic, light. They respond to all these energies, which are carriers. So if you are using that energy and uh, put the power of intention to ride on everything uh, through affirmations, positive affirmations, you are putting positive intention, not only through what you're, what's going through your mind, but actions are also affirmations. Just like, uh, what's the definition of love? Love is a verb of action. So when you act in a loving way, it's the most powerful af form of affirmation. There's no point in saying, I, I, I love you, but it's all, if it's just emotional or mental, it's got to be followed by action. Next slide. Again, this is the pineal uh, and all of its uh, connections, how it affects other organs. The, 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 the breasts, adrenals, gut, gonads, uh, affects puberty, affects the pituitary, and uh, biochemical, biochemical balances in the body, affects the hypothalamus, the thyroid, and the retina. Seems to be a powerful loop involving the pituitary and the thyroid, affecting metabolism. So many of your clients will have some kind of disruption of this loop, the pineal pituitary thyroid. The thyroid uh, is, a, is a source of many problems for people. And, and, and you, you won't know unless you test, test for that. Yeah. Okay, next slide. 
Oh, again, this is the little cysts inside the pineal. It's like a screen. And when the, when the, the high frequency energy comes in carrying, uh, it's like a TV signal. And this is like a TV set. Uh, many of them, and the, the the signal, the carrier signal comes in, and then the picture is riding on the signal. So it's a good metaphor for our work: the the power of intention and information, riding on the raw energy, vibrational energy. Sensitive to virtual photons, which is same as sca scalar waves, which I'll talk about later. Okay, ne next slide, thanks. These are, this is a, a study on calcite microcrystals in the pineal gland. So they've been, they've been identified by scientists and that they have a piezoelectric effect. So when, when they get this high frequency energy, there's a piezoelectric effect that uh, create signals that we can uh, understand by the piezo, you know, with the piezoelectric effect, we are crystal. When you vibrate a crystal, it will produce an electrical signal that can be um, interpreted by the human body. Yep. Are, you all, are you all comfortable? Do you want a break? No? No, you're okay. Now, like, what's this? Oh, yeah, piezoluminescence. Again, the, the, the little crystals, the calcite crystals, the calcium carbonate, carbonate, when they uh, are subjected to this energy, they, they all also give off light, which may be why we get these pictures in our brain. So, some people uh, get pictures they don't want to see. But <laughs> okay, nec uh, next, next slide now. Now, the pineal also gets crystals of an undesirable nature as we get older. Okay, this is another very important experiment. Again, demonstrating the transmission of information. Again, here's a cell culture. And uh, the, the ultraviolet photons uh, pass through and affect and infect the second culture, provided this is a quartz, showing that it's ultraviolet. Ultraviolet energy is the carrier. Because <coughs> when you use ordinary glass, ultraviolet can't, can't pass through. So it's showing that there is a, a proximity effect w with biophotons of an ultraviolet uh, ultraviolet uh, part of the spectrum. And, uh, there's also um, a frequency, 380 nanometers is uh, an important frequency for cancer, for healing cancer. Three, 380, 380 nanometers. I, I have some of these ultraviolet pens 380 nanometers. Uh, what I'm thinking, uh, I think I need to have a way, a cable that connects with the, with it with my devices so that they plugs in and it will pick up the intent. It's not enough just to have ultraviolet. There has to be the intention writing on the ultraviolet. So if I, if I get a cable and plug it into one of my devices, that intention from the crystal will be carried on this very effective uh, energy wave. Look it up on Wikipedia, three, 380 nanometers. And it can reduce cancer? Yeah. yeah. This is mentioned in uh, that book by Wilcox, isn't it? Yeah. That's another great book you might want to get. The Source, Source, Field Source Field Investigation by David Wilcox. It's, it's, a, it's a nice encyclopedic wealth of, of information about all this stuff, including pyramids and things like that. Okay, next, uh, next slide. Yeah, there it is, yeah, 380 nanometer for cancer. 
It's a key frequency that cells use for repairing damage. A, a weak light is, uh, is found to speed up the healing of cells. It occurs naturally within cells. This was uh, Fritz Pop discovered that the carcinogenic substances absorb this energy and convert it to some other f non some other toxic frequency. Communication. Right? Uh, oh yeah, mistletoe is another uh, good remedy for cancer. Mistletoe. Actually, uh, a year ago, I I had a girlfriend who had t terminal cancer, breast cancer, in Montreal. So I moved there to be with her, and we hope that with all of this 380 nanometer and she 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 went to all she had intravenous vitamin C and she even went to Dolores Cannon for a session but unfortunately she died in March in Montreal so I came back uh, when she when she died but it, sh it shows you that sometimes you're up against forces that you don't understand if we had if we, she and I could have understood what we were up against some kind of miasm some kind of karma um, or people that she was around, toxic people, three sources. We, we might have been able to turn it around, but we didn't know. Um, we thought we were doing the best. What did you say? You said toxic people, myasm, and what was the first one? Karma. Karma. Karma is a kind of miasm that uh, is a residual from past lives. And this is part of what I want in our devices, is to uh, negate karma and miasms. Because there's no point in t trying to do healing when you're the, the, you're the, pa the, the client is full of karmic, miasmic residues. Yes, sir, Aaron? What's the difference then between karma and miasm? A miasm is something that's present, uh, originates right now in, in this lifetime and often is of an infective nature. It's come from the world around us. And, you know, the, 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 the condensation of popul That's why I moved to Innisfil on, on uh, Lake Simcoe, to get away from the miasms of society. Spiritual virus? Spiritual viruses, yeah, of a negative nature, yeah. Uh, so they're prevailing, they're present. Karma is a residual from past lives. And there, you really have to have uh, regression therapy, the, the kind that uh, Dolores Cannon was doing and is written in her book. I recommend you try and read at least one of Dolores Cannon's book about past life therapy. I've read all her books. What was it like meeting her? Did you meet her? You said you worked with her. I, I was interviewed on her TV show but I didn't actually meet her. But my girlfriend went down to Alabama t to get a session with her. And um, during a session with Dolores Cannon, she gets you in touch with your subconscious, which can heal. So Dolores Cannon said, you're, you're healed. But that was not to be. I think maybe she was healed, but when she went back to the same environment, she picked up the same miasms again. Well, it could be. I mean, we, we don't know enough about that to put labels on it. Right. Yeah, we don't. Because I'm just thinking about a lot of the emotional. When I uh, work with people, a lot of the physical is a station of the emotional, right? Mm -hmm. and, the, and the power of thought. The emotions, uh, negative emotions create negative thoughts. Right. And negative thoughts bring about negative events from our subconscious, superconscious, yeah. Because that's one thing I, I work a lot with. Mm -hmm. you, you try and get your clients to use affirmations, okay. if you can, yeah. They should be using affirmations. It's like a diet of affirmations. And the affirmations have to be in a certain, certain form. Uh, the old form of prayer doesn't work very well. It's, it's uh, suppliant. Please, God, 
solve my problems. It's, it's just a disaffirmation. It's a confirming our negative state. And you're asking God to pull you out of it. But it's a confirmation of our negative state. What you have to do is to affirm the complete, your complete desired state. I am now healed completely. Everything is working in my favor. So it's got to be in the present tense. It's got to be completed. And then... Greg Braden's The Isaiah Effect. The Isaiah Effect by Greg Braden. Yeah, it's another book. Thank God well, because you're, you're, n- you're now healed. Right. Yeah. As if you're now healed. Yeah, that's what we're and that's difficult for some people when they feel that they're s- sick. H- um, how, c- how can I be healed when I'm not healed? It's a, it's a paradox. But you have to get beyond the paradox and sort of project yourself into the future. Your future self is healed, say, through retroactive causality from your future self, maybe. Hmm. Okay, uh, next, next slide. Thanks. Oh, yeah, um, the, the, the power of crystals. Have you seen this at the health shows, the John of God bed? And we have one. Maybe we should show it in the afternoon. Our 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 John our John of God crystal device. Ex- except I I invented it before I disco- discovered John of God's work. Uh, the the John of God one has a fixed a, f- a fixed color in each of the seven crystals, and these are these are Lemurian crystals because they're elongated. Lemurian are the best crystals. I have a couple of them. But what we have is one single uh, emitter, and then we can put any color through, 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 we can dial up any color through that one emitter, so we can mix colors and pulse it it at different frequencies. So it's a very exceptional device. I want you to try it and give me some feedback on what you feel. Because you're a a very sensitive group of people. So your feedback is very precious and valuable. <coughs> so the person lies down and, and each of the chakras gets uh, stimulated by the appropriate color. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Okay, we'll have the nec- next slide. In there. And then we'll stop soon for a break. I think there is no next slide. Oh. Well, there you are. So we'll, we're going to go on to the more technical part with some of the devices shortly. So I'll have a break for five minutes and we'll get started. <laughs>